Hey guys, I'm going to show you how to do a transmission and clutch on a 2022 GR86. We are using our Scalar Performance Gas GUR, as we call it. This is our car we use for endurance racing and also testing some of the tech components that we run on the SCR1. So I'm going to start at the top on the engine bay and show you what we do to remove the transmission. Step one, always disconnect the battery. Because the starter is related to this transmission, we have to pull it off. Rather than doing some 12 volt welding, which would make great for some outtakes, I'm going to disconnect the battery first. The 10 mils missing. It's always missing. <sighs> I found it. <laughs> Everybody knows the 10 mils always missing. So this is a little different than your standard battery setup uh, because we're running a battery isolator for the regulations and the series that we run. The battery configures a little bit different. So the starter I have on this anti-gravity battery um, on its own, not on the battery isolator. So I can disconnect the starter wire, leave it off to the side. You can isolate the starter wire on your GR86 factory battery. And then I'm going to put the battery back on so that the starter's not on, but the car is, so Brian can do some more programming with the computer. Now that we've isolated the starter wire, now we can go ahead and start removing the starter. So the starter on this car is on the passenger side of the back. We're going to start by removing the wiring harnesses at the back of the intake. We're going to start by removing these big connectors, the starter trigger wire, and then we're going to lay this harness off to the side. Here is also your neutral and reverse switch. We'll also unplug those and lay them off to the side. You have a ground wire here that is bolted to the case of the transmission. We'll also remove that. And then we'll remove the slave cylinder on this side and just lay it off to the side. You don't have to open the slave cylinder as you can leave it the hydraulic system closed so you can don't have to bleed the clutch after. Now that I have this engine harness disconnected, I can lay this off to the side. On the starter, I'm going to disconnect the trigger wire, which is just a single spade connector at the back. Next, I'll disconnect the 12 volt battery supply, which is a 12 mil nut on the back of it. This is where my flex head ratchet wrenches are super handy. Next, I'm going to take off the ground wire, which goes down below the down the starter on the side of the transmission is just a little 12 mil bolt. And then I can take this whole battery harness and lay it off to the side. Okay. Next, we're going to take off the slave cylinder, which is just two 14 mil bolts on the top of the transmission. Okay, now we're going to unbolt the starter, which is two 14 mil bolts on the passenger side. Should be able to get to them with this. If not, we'll have to get a wrench out. That is the cutest little starter. Yeah, I thought that too, isn't it? That's like, adorable. Why does it start it? Amazing. So yeah. while we're up top, we're pretty much done. I'm going to undo one more bell housing bolt at the top here, and then the rest of the bell housing bolts we can get to from the bottom. Maybe I'll get one more while I'm up here on this side. So 
So in quick summary, when you're up top, you're gonna to do the wiring harness, the starter, the slave cylinder, the top four bow housing bolts, the ground bolts, and that pretty much wraps it up for the top. So we're going to the inside of the car now and show you how to take the shifter surround off. So that way you can get the shift knob off and take the boot surround off the floor to get the transmission out. So our car's a bit stripped obviously because it's a race car, but we do still have the pieces that you need to remove inside the car. So first of all, you'll start by taking this panel off the center. It's just a bunch of clips and you'll find two hidden screws in here. These two hidden screws allow you to pull off the shifter surround. So once you get those screws off, this will pop off. The shift knob just simply threads on and threads off. Once you get those off, the clips will come off. Off cups the shifter piece. And now you have to deal with are these pieces. This one I already have on this side for some wiring. So it's just a screw here. And this is on clips and it pulls straight back lays off to the side. Now you have to take this boot off. Four 12 mil bolts, the metal cage comes off, and the boot comes off. Now you have all this room in the floor to drop the shifter out. So now that we've got this stuff off on the inside of the car, we're gonna go under and take the transmission out. So now that we're underneath the car, we're going to start by removing the exhaust system, then the drive shaft, then the rest of the bow housing bolts, the shifter mount, and then the transmission should slide out. So we'll start with the exhaust. Ours has an exhaust system on it, so the flanges are pretty much in the same location though. So we're going to start by removing the flange after the manifold that comes up over the steering rack, and then we'll take this pipe off all the way to the muffler. Okay, now that the exhaust is off, we're gonna go ahead and pull the drive shaft. But just before we do that, I'm gonna drain the transmission of its fluid. So when we pull the drive shaft out, that we don't lose all the fluid at the back of the transmission. So to drain the transmission, it's gonna be this socket at the top to fill, this one at the bottom to drain. So I'll pull the one at the top just so that the transmission can breathe and the fluid drains out and doesn't splash everywhere. And then we'll pull the bottom one and drain it into a pan. Where's the catch pan? Now too is a good time once you're draining your transmission fluid to inspect the magnet that's on the bottom of the drain plug for any debris from the transmission and run your finger through it. Just make sure there's no sparkles in it check the integrity of the transmission. And I did all that without making a mess. Okay, now we can go ahead and take out the drive shaft. The drive shaft is going to compose of these two hanger bearing bolts and then your four bolts at the drive shaft at the back. Grant, can you take the parking brake off for a second? Is it in gear still? Yeah, can you take it out of gear? Okay, put the parking brake on. 
Thank you. Where's that rubber mallet? Now that we have the drive shaft out of the way, we can go ahead and take this mount off the back of the shifter, which is just two 12 mil bolts up here. Then after that, we'll take the transmission out or transmission mount out. Grant, can you put it in third gear? So the reason I have it in gear now is to lean the shifter forward. So when I drop the transmission out, the shifter will be forward all the way and not catch any of the body as it comes out. So before I completely take the mount out, I'm going to go ahead and loosen all the bolts for the bell housing. This way the engine and transmission is just mounted firmly and I can mount those bolts without everything moving around. So I'll leave one bolt in just to keep the engine and transmission together, but it's just finger loose. Now you'll see the engine and transmission just floating freely. This is the part where we really should have a transmission jack, but we don't have one here. So, It'll just make it easier because we're going to hand bomb it if I take this off. So rather than leave the shifter attached to the transmission just for ease of removal, they actually make it very easy to pop off. So on the side, I'll show you on this transmission over here. So once you've taken this rear mount off, now the only thing holding the shifter assembly to the transmission is three pins. So there's just these little spring tabs here that you pop out. One pin, two pins, we pop out the safety pin for the shifter. And then this whole thing will just slide out. I guess this being brand new, it's awfully stiff. And that's that. So the one collar did stay in here. So that's fine if that one stays in. Just make sure you don't lose these little bushings. And then there's a small washer that goes on that side for the pin. Now that you've taken that off, that'll make it a lot easier to move up in and out of the car. It's not terribly heavy. So now I have to try and do that in the car. Oh, you're just in time. Because we don't have a tranny jack. Uh, I can't reach. You want <laughs> short people problems? Short people problems. <laughs> There we go. There we go.
That makes me happy. Okay, so now that can just kind of stay there. Yeah, it's gonna fall as soon as it's going kind of transmission. Maybe. Grant, can you hold on to the stick for a minute? Yeah. Okay, don't let it fall. Okay. There you go. So because the engine hangs over the front of the subframe, once we take the transmission off, the engine is just going to want to lean forward. So by putting a little bit of support on the front of the engine, it doesn't, one, tension up your motor mounts, two, break the airbox off or flex anything in the front, and it makes it easier for us to slide the transmission off and then back on. There we go. Perfect. He's got it. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna take the clutch off. Um, we're not necessarily replacing it, we're just inspecting it. It's probably got about 30 hours of racing on it. So we'll just have a look at it. You're gonna start by taking all the pressure plate bolts off and you wanna take them out on the star pattern and diagonally. If you're reusing the clutch, that way you don't wreck or warp the pressure plate you want, because it's a big spring. You want it to come off in an even pattern. Same thing when you're tightening it down. So I'll take it off because we might reuse it in a nice even pattern all the way around to slowly relieve pressure. So things that you'll want to look out for <clears throat> is hot spots on the pressure plate, hot spots on the flywheel, the thickness of your disc. So there's little grooves in here. If those grooves are gone or you're almost down to the rivets, if it's a puck clutch, you won't have those grooves. But if you're close to the rivets, that's an indication that the clutch is pretty much worn out. Uh, another thing you want to look out for is these springs. They're not supposed to move like that. They're supposed to be in there semi-tight. So those rattling around in there, you can see on the end of them, they're starting to wear out. The springs are wearing out a lot faster than the actual friction material is. So we'll look at the other, a new clutch, and see what it is compared and see if it's worth replacing or not. Surprise That is loose. But the friction material looks pretty Lots fresh. Lots of friction material is perfect. I love their pictures on the back of the box. The oh, little, yeah. The little clutch man. <laughs> yeah, the animated. Yeah, so as you can see on this one, the springs are a little loose, but they're not, not as rattly as this one. Also, don't do that. So, do you know what the springs do? I don't. So the springs, so when you hear, uh, uh, either a sprung clutch or an unsprung clutch. So a sprung clutch obviously has springs in it. So this centerpiece... Isn't that just some shock absorbing? Yeah, so this centerpiece the transmission splines into yeah. has little forks on it that ride on this side of the spring. And the friction material is bonded to this, which is on this side of the springs. So when you engage it, the springs take up your initial yeah. engagement so it has a nice softer feel to it. Usually race cars don't have sprung clutches. Uh, yeah, they're unsprung which are a pain in the drive, pain to drive. And yeah, because it's instant engagement. Yeah. And, and I assume everybody who drives this is just pretty much banging through the gears and dropping the clutch on each one. And that's usually what causes that. Yeah. So we are gonna change the clutch after pulling it out and discovering that the springs inside here are really, really loose. And we actually found a piece of broken spring in the clutch. So despite the material being great, we're still gonna replace it. So we have a replacement. We're gonna stick with an OE clutch just because of the number of drivers that we have in this car. It feels great, it works great, it shifts amazing, it's nice to drive. Um, and there's no real need to put any extra load on the drivetrain with a super heavy duty clutch just to wear out other things. This is a pretty cheap component to buy. And as you can see, extremely easy to remove the transmission and just even service it every 
30 to 50 hours of racing. So we're gonna opt for staying with the uh, staying with the stock clutch. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the flywheel now. We're gonna change the uh, pilot bearing in the back of the flywheel and then we'll put the clutch back on. Worth noting, once you get this off, there is your crankshaft pickup. So do not let this fall off. If it turns and it gets put back on and it's in the wrong place, this basically tells the computer what the time is on the engine. So there's a little dowel here. Make sure that stays locked in for your crank sensor up here. So take note of how far in this pilot bearing is into the flywheel. It's pretty much flush with the surface on the outer race, so we'll reinstall the new one the same as this one. So I just take a socket and hammer, and you can just hammer it through. And there's no direction on this, so it can go in anyway. Just make sure the socket is the same size as the outer race as hammering on the inner race or the seal will damage it. So make sure you get a socket that will press in and out on the outer race. Okay, now we're gonna make sure that we torque these bolts down to the proper spec. So I've got a 19 mil wrench on the front just holding the crankshaft so it doesn't spin while I torque it. Good to go. So on the uh, friction material, there's always a flywheel side and a flex plate side. As you can see, it sticks out more on one side. So take note when you take it off to pay attention to that. Usually it says on it, this one says transmission side, so you know which way it goes on. So you'll take the alignment tool that comes with the new clutch kits, or if you've done enough of them, I don't have it here, but I took an old Subaru transmission, cut the input shaft off, because it's metal, metal one's obviously better, but you always want to align the clutch disc when you put it on. If this isn't lined up, you'll never get the transmission put on. You're on cleaning duty. Fine. Always make sure you clean the oil off the friction material, off the pressure plate, the flywheel. Any oil on this will degrade the quick clutch's uh, ability. Uh, well, it, it'll degrade the clutch. It'll also not make it grab as well. It starts slipping, builds excessive heat, and then it destroys the new clutch before you've even used it. I'll clean. So when we tighten the pressure plate, you wanna make sure you tighten it in the star pattern. Don't tighten the bolts all the way. Put half in and then go back in, half in again. That way you don't warp the spring of the pressure plate. And now we can pull out 
the dummy plug. Okay, now we can put the transmission back in. It's good practice to pull off the fork. Make sure that joint is greased. That joint is greased. Because what will happen is if you wear out the grease in here, that pivot ball will get rust on this fork. And then it will actually seize on here. And these forks have a bad habit of cracking right here. Um, also grease the joints where the release bearing rides in the fork. So this, this transmission only has 5,000 kilometers on it of road driving. So it's worth noting that how much grease they actually put in from the factory. We want to pretty much do the same thing. Now we can put the transmission in the car. Make sure that all of this moves freely. The fork is pressed nicely under the clip and it's retained and the boot is in properly and not falling out all around here. Also worth noting, you want a little bit of grease just on this snout, but not very much because as the grease falls off this and lands on the input shaft, it'll throw it out and then get all of your clutch discs. So this is just a very, very light greasing. This already had substantial clean grease from being such a low kilometer transmission. So I opted to not put new stuff on it and just leave it. We're putting the transmission in now. <laughs> <laughs> and making grunting sounds. Sweet. I've let go. Okay, so we have the transmission in now. To fight, or to save fighting with the stiff shifter bushing on the shifter rod, we left the shifter linkage, I'll show you on this one. Left the shifter linkage attached here, but just took these small pins out. So we could lift this off the transmission and point that into the hole where we needed to. And that allowed us to, cause fighting with this in the car was gonna be a pain in the butt. So. Again, you can just leave this connected, pull those pins out, and this makes it easier to slide in there. Uh, yeah, let's take that mount off there. Drop this. That might also be pushing on it. You should do uh, up. Drop it down. Keep going. There we go. Well, that was fiddly. Just have to hold your tongue right. Perfect. Okay, shifter's in. Hey, he's got a few bolts to throw in. One or two. Okay, so now that we have the transmission mount bolted back in, the shifter is all tied back up. We're going to put the shifter mount back under the floor. We're going to finish putting our bell housing bolts on, drive shaft, exhaust, and then back to the top. So start with the shifter bolts. Okay, now drive shaft. So 
to put the transmission in neutral so that I can line these up. I don't think there's transmission fluid in this, so I'm going to pull the... When it rains, you'll find it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to pull the plugs on this transmission. See if there's fluid in it. empty. So we're running a Amsoil Severe Gear 75 140. The reason we've upped the weight is because in racing obviously things get extremely hot um, and we found the 90 weight wasn't enough to keep up with the heat demands that this thing made. Okay, now that the exhaust is back on, we're pretty much done everything on the bottom, so we're gonna go up to the top and button the top back up. So now we've got the transmission back in, we'll go ahead and put the boot back on it. And we'll put the cage on. And just like that. And if you're wondering why we have a brake line in here, back here we have our brake bias valve so that the driver can adjust it when they're driving. Also our brake pressure sensor here too so we can monitor brake pressure. So now that we're back at the top, I'm gonna go ahead and start putting the bell housing bolts back in on this side. Then we'll put the slave cylinder back on. Now that that's back in, we'll put the starter in. And don't forget on the bottom starter bolt is where your ground strap goes. So this bolt goes in the bottom. All the bolts are the same length. and bring our harness back over. And we'll go to the battery cable.
Okay, so we got the ground strap on, the pot 12 volt strap for the battery, or from the battery to the starter, and then the trigger wire, so that does it for the battery cables. Next, we can roll over to the final piece, which is just this small harness. So we have our neutral switch, reverse switch plugged in, this small little ground strap on top, all the clips and the wires, the bulkhead harness, and then the starter trigger wire. Next, we hook the battery cable back up for the starter, and then we're all done. And that's it. That is how we do the transmission and clutch in our 2022 GR86. So thanks for watching, like and subscribe, and follow us on the journey of prototyping the gas car and the electric SCR1. If you guys have any comments, questions, I'd love to see your feedback. If you got any tips or tricks for stuff like the shifter on these cars, let us know what you think. Thanks for watching. Uh...